Hello friends, welcome back to JK Dent. Today our topic is principles of major connector and its biomechanics. In this topic, we are going to learn in detail about L-beam principle, circular configuration and strut configuration. So before moving into the principles of major connector, let's see what is a connector. So connector is something that connects one side of the component to the other. Why it is called as a major connector? First of all, it plays the major role of connecting the parts and secondly, it covers large amount of area. That's why it is called as major connector. There are certain design requirements we need to fulfill before designing our assembly. Our major connector must be rigid. Why it must be rigid? Because the rigidity will help in uniform distribution of occlusal load and it will keep our assembly without distortion. Secondly, if it will be flexible, you can see that these rods are flexible. If our assembly is also flexible like this, it will lead to undue stresses, which we don't want. Second, it should provide indirect retention. Indirect retention helps to prevent rotatory movement. Our major connector do not replace the indirect retainers. But whenever it is necessary, our major connector must provide the indirect retention. It should protect the soft tissues. Obviously, our assembly should not cause any harm to the tissues. As well as, it should maintain the vertical support. It should be comfortable to the patient. If it is not comfortable, your patient will not wear your assembly. There should not be any food lodgement and it must be self-cleansing. So these were certain requirements. Now we will see how we can fulfill them with biomechanical principle. First principle we are going to see is L-beam principle. L-beam principle deals with rigidity and stress concentration. That it says we want an assembly which is rigid enough to bear the stresses. So how can we achieve a rigid assembly? So in this diagram you can see there are two supports on that there is a bar. The central part is called as parabolic part and the end part is called as cortic part. The central part bears the maximum load while the cortic part bears zero load because it is near the support. As parabolic part is bearing maximum load, it is more flexible. But we don't want a flexible assembly. So what we can do? According to the L-beam principle, we can prefer this formula. What it says, flexor is directly proportional to the distance between the supports and inversely proportional to the thickness. So, if we will increase the thickness, our flexor will reduce. But this will make our assembly bulky, which we don't want. So, we have distance parameter in our hand. So, we will bring the supports closer. But secondly, while bringing the supports closer, we need to maintain the proportion. That is, maintaining the proportion of total earlier proportion. That is, we cannot change the proportion. So earlier it was like parabolic part was 50%, but when we have reduced the distance, it comes to be about 33%. And cortic part has increased. So because of that, there is advantage of getting rigidity without changing the proportion. Along with that, we get an advantage of proper stress concentration. But still there is a problem. The cortic part is still overhanging. We don't want an overhang part. So what we can do? We can 
pull the parabolic part and by pulling the parabolic part we get a bend in this area and automatically our cortic part lies at the support so when it lies at a support it directs the horizontal stresses directly in the area of the support so it helps in proper stress concentration it makes our assembly rigid as well as it helps in proper stress distribution but stress distribution is a part set by strut configuration which we will see later the clinical significance of this albeam principle is that we can give broad parallel major connectors in two planes with rigid assembly without adding bulk to it this is a shallow lateral a uh, pallet and this is a deep pallet so you can see that here parabolic part will be more while the lateral part will be comparatively less than the deeper one because here we get automatically less area of the parabolic part and larger area of the lateral part because of the more lateral slopes the second is strut configuration so what do you mean by a strut strut is something that are strands you can see this is a bridge on that there is strands that strands help us for additional support also it helps to distribute the stresses strut configuration says it helps to direct the horizontal stresses in the lateral direction in the area of the support or you can say in the area of bone you can see this in the diagram the stresses are being directed this configuration is helpful in the part of rugae as rugae act as a secondary strut the rugae helps us in stress distribution then comes circular configuration as you can see the circular configuration this is a circle circle is a continuous unit with no end so stresses can be distributed all over the area of the circumference so there is infinite stress distribution what is the clinical significance of that it helps to reduce bulk of major connector by giving a closed assembly now we will move on to the design consideration so these were some biomechanical considerations we need in our design for getting a rigid design for stress concentration and for proper stress distribution design consideration says there should be at least 6 mm of gap of the anterior plate of the major connector so that your gingiva is not impinged why because there is highly vascular marginal gingiva and in mandible it requires 3 mm of relief secondly it should be parallel and the part of the framework adjoining the tooth that is this part must be hidden in the embrages if it is not hidden in the embrages it will lead to discomfort then comes bud joint the bud joint is a 90 degree joint if this is not a 90 degree joint it will lead to stress concentrations in this area it also says there should not be any interference with the tongue you all know that our tongue goes in that area where there is sharpness or when there is something stuck in between our teeth our tongue goes in that direction so if our assembly have sharp angles our tongue will get constantly irritated which we don't want that's why margins must be rounded then comes our major connector must end at the valley of the rugae not crest in cases if it is possible try not to cover the rugae because rugae plays important role in the speech speech is very important part when you are delivering a cast partial denture but if you are covering it you need to end up into the valley of the rugae not at the crest so you can see this is crest and this is valley so your major connector anterior part must stand somewhere here then comes beading beading is something creating depression in the posterior area 
and if there is anterior posterior bar then creating a depression in the anterior area why you need to create that this depression comes as an elevation and this elevation helps to maintain the seal also it prevents any kind of food lodgement last is tori tori is you all know it is a bony protuberance so it will cause interference if you give full palatal major connector so you need to create a window for the relief of the tori that window helps in relief and also gives advantage of a closed assembly like an antero posterior palatal strap or you can say antero posterior palatal bar in the antero posterior palatal bar or you can say strap you get advantage of circular configuration you get advantage of rigidity that it is playing the role of elbeam principle and also the strut configuration where there is proper stress distribution that's why it is considered better assembly i hope you have understood the topic very well i have explained you about basic of major connectors its design considerations its biomechanical principles and clinical applied part if you have any doubt you can comment in the comment box or you can mail me thank you so much everyone for your response and don't forget to press the bell icon and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like and comment thank you